we are just about to start a new endeavor, which I like to call Spirit of the Law. Um, we're starting from the beginning of the Kitz or Shulchan Aruch. You can do this in a lot of levels. Um, basically, trying to discuss and probe and delve into the wondrous, endless depths of halacha. Halacha means to go, and this is the way a person is supposed to go in life. Halacha is a way of connecting to Hashem. People, very often, you speak with people like, well, I have, you know, I, I'm a good Jew in my heart, and I'm connected to God in my heart, and I have faith in my heart. We have to know, halacha is one of the strongest ways to connect us to Hashem. It's like a, 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 a binding agent, something very, very powerful. It's like a kind of glue. Devekut, you know, we say devekut, it means to cleave to, to Hashem. One of the best ways of doing that is fulfilling halacha and connecting to Hashem. Now, before we start, the first rule of learning about halacha is that we don't understand anything at all, and that the Shla Kadosh says, if you spent a thousand years researching one of the minutia, any detail you want of halacha, you would not plumb the absolute depths of it. So, like, we can talk and we can be inspired, but we're not saying the reason. There's no the reason. Rav Tzadik HaKohen of Lublin famously says that God talks to you in your heart. Rav Nassim also talks about this a lot, but he goes further. He says the people, the great sages, they know what the halacha is because God is speaking to them. That is a tricky level to reach. It's rare that a person is really holding in such a place. And generally speaking, if you want to really know what to do, you need to ask the people who are holding in these places. You can't just... I got it, I know what I'm doing, because we all have this part of us that has an agenda. We have part of us that has this agenda. It, we have this thing that wants whatever it wants. And um, sometimes it's honor, sometimes it's um, money, sometimes it could be lots of things. So that part of us makes it really hard to really understand what Hashem is telling us. Rav Nassim goes so far as to say, Rav Nachman brings this idea, it's brought in many places, this concept that God is always speaking to us. Everything you see is a remez. It's all a hint from God. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to us. So that doesn't mean we know what he's saying. We just have to believe he's talking to us and do our best to find something that's going to be helpful. But we might misunderstand. We might be way off. I know someone, the person was um, wondering, should I smoke? Shouldn't I smoke? They, they ran into a pack of cigarettes. Oh, maybe it's a semen I do want. I don't want. It's like, very nice. You know, I've... They asked me, what should I do? I was like, you might have a Shavata Veda. You might have to like return it. You found it, like, it's a Shaila, is it a Simon, not a Simon, where it was. It could be not. Like, it's the cloud, there was like a different, like, that's not a, that's not a real, like, it's not a Simon. It could be, you should smoke. I don't know what you should do. I have no idea. But I, like, it's a little, you have a health problem. You have problems, but it could be, I, I don't know. But like, that's not a Simon necessarily. That's not a bona fide Simon, God showing me that necessarily. It might be, but it might not be. If you feel a craving to smoke, it probably is not. But any extra low, yeah, but, you know, we, we don't really, we can't really tell. So it was interesting. You know, I had a simon on the way here because we're going to learn about a concept called Shiviti Hashem, Shiviti Hashem, the Negdi Tamid, like the beginning of Shulchan Aruch is. We're supposed to place Hashem before us always. And um, I had a conversation with this random person and he brought this up. I said, that is so interesting. I'm very, very thankful to Hashem. It's very, it's very, it's, it's very um, gratifying to run into someone, you say, maybe I'm, maybe not, but maybe, could be, I'm in the right direction. So and so, and this guy, this random uh, delivery guy, is just mentioning, I was like, that is, that's a beautiful thing. So I guess we'll, let's first read the, the Kitzer, because we're learning a little bit of Kitzer, and then we're going to explain a little bit what it's about, with Hashem's help. So the beginning of the Kitzer starts. I placed God before me always. This is a general principle in Torah and in the greatness of the tzaddikim that go before Hashem. Here, we're in the Emunah Center, right? This is all about Emunah. The Kit Shekhanach starts out, Emunah. The Shekhanach starts out, Emunah. Right? Because a person doesn't sit alone and um, when he feels like, when I feel alone, I'm alone, I'm, I'm all by myself, I tend to act differently than uh, when I, you, know, you walk in someone, uh, even a relative, they expect people, they don't expect people, you can find them in a Maybe not in the most comfortable state. Could be this guy doesn't have his shoes and socks on. Could be I don't know what he doesn't have on. Actually, yeah, like bottom line is the person is like he, he's uh, he's alone. So I'm alone. I can be. I can dress however I want or not dress however I want. I'm in my house alone. 
you know, I don't, I don't mind. Um, I don't, I don't care. You know, so that's one way of doing things. That's that's a natural way of doing things. Every natural, every person naturally feels differently when he's with people than when it's alone. It's totally the way Hashem made us. That's the way Hashem made us. That's part of the greatness of having a good atmosphere, having good friends, being connected to a good place and good people, because that picks me up and that directs me on the direction towards where these people are. While if my friends and my associations is something not so great, so I have to pay attention, like that's where I'm going. So, and I can have lots of different things, but I have to know this is, this leads to one thing and this leads to another thing. We all understand this. Um, someone, uh, some kid hanging around with um, people who are into things that aren't good things, negative behaviors. We're going to be worried about the, the teenager or the child or whatever and say, hey, you know, these friends are not good friends. Like, well, why not? I'm not doing this. I am doing this. It doesn't help that much because if you're hanging around with that crowd, you're going to feel inspired and or pushed or or whatever to go where they go. So that's the natural state. We have to work on the state. We are supposed to bring Hashem into our life all the time, all the time. That's our job. So we're. It's not the same when we're with someone important. If we're with an important personage, if we're with, uh, I don't know, whoever you might feel is important, every person is different, I guess. For some people, it might be the President of the United States. For another person, it might be a rock star more than the President of the United States. And it depends on the person and where he's holding. Maybe some great rabbi. I mean, it depends who, who you uh, look up to, who you esteem, whatever. So when you're with this person, you feel different. Now, it used to be, you could say, a king. Today, a king is like, it's more like a relic than anything like terribly awe-inspiring. So like... Uh, I don't think a king is so relevant today. Although, you know, you could say it too, the king or someone who's important to me. If I'm with someone important to me who I want to impress, I want to feel that they're, you know, you know, they uh, they need they need to be treated differently than when I'm home alone. I'm home alone. I'm home alone. And I'm with my family also. And my, my family also. I'm going to be myself. That's what he says. So he says, you have to know, we have to, we have to change this around. We have to be able to realize that God is with us all the time. So we have to be on, as it were, our best behavior, as it were. And, of course, Rav Dustin is very quick, and he right away points out, listen, this does not mean to feel pressurized. You say, oh, God is here. I have to feel pressure. I have to feel, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, 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 under, I'm under the gun. Here, Hashem is here. That's not the idea. The idea is what's called Yor Lechaim, which means I want very much to... Realize that God is watching me, He loves me, and He's taking care of me, and here He is right here with me. And like, and I want to act accordingly, naturally, in a relaxed way, not in a pressured, bad kind of way. So, this is what, he, this is what the first step of the Shulchanach says. We need to fulfill Shivisi Hashem the Negisam. So, I'm walking on my way to this center here, on, uh, you know, through Rechavia. I really don't know where I am. I know where I am, but I don't know where this place is, so I don't know where I am. Um, and where I'm supposed to go. So you can be wandering around. So I, you know, when asked directions. So I asked a few people directions. And um, one a really nice guy, you know, we had a little yarmulke on, we had a bunch of flowers. He said, oh, whoa, well, that's like a bit of a ways. He said, um, you know, you have to go down there and get Oza Street and I don't know, left, right, right, left, something like that, whatever he said. So I was like, thank you, I'll find a way I'll ask. He said, no, you actually, why don't you hop in my car? I'll, I'll drive you maybe part of the way. I'm like, thanks, that's great. So I get in this guy's car. And I said, you know, you're very lucky. I really, people don't realize. Here we are. We're in Eretz Israel. We're in Israel. In Israel, the Gemara says you go for um, it's four, four amos, four cubits. A cubit, I don't know, it's a foot and a half, two feet, depends who you ask. So um, let's say it's six feet or eight feet. It says you're, you are going to make it to the world to come. That's pretty amazing, right? You don't say that about everything. That's really special. So the Rambam brings this in the code. Um, the Yad HaZakai brings this, says the Halach Lemaisa. So I said, you know, you go four cubits in Israel. And uh, hey, you, you know, there you are. And you're going and going. That's your job. So you're, you're, you're very lucky. It's something I try to remember. It's hard to remember because you, you just you tend you go and you go and you forget. So that's why I told him. So he said, wow, yeah, you're right. That's great. I mean, he really was very, he was very happy and inspired. And said, you, know, you have to remember, he said, when I'm driving, he said, I have a lot of challenges. Because, you know, this guy... You want to turn, and this guy doesn't let you, and this guy does let you in. People, they, they act in Israel, you know. My father likes a joke. He says, um, in America, when you feel aggression, you get therapy. In Israel, you just get on the road. Everything's okay. You know, you just, people are so aggressive in the driving. It's like, it's unbelievable, you know. I know a lot of people, they used to relax to drive in the States. Here they say, no, driving is like a fight. It's not a relaxation. It could be. I don't know. You know, I don't really drive here. I guess I just, I don't like the tension. But um, so... 
like he said, these people drive and drive and you have to drive all over and you have to deliver and you're not in a rush, but you don't want to be held up. You want people to act in a courteous manner and they're not necessarily doing so. So he said, I feel like I have a lot of challenges on my patience. I need to be patient. And it's hard. So he said, at a certain point, I realized, you know, this is from Hashem. It's from Hashem. So if it's from Hashem, you know, I was like, wow, it's like Mama Shemuna. It's from Hashem. This is from Hashem. So why am I getting upset? Another three seconds, another four, five seconds, five seconds less. So Hashem's doing it. It's like, it's like you're on a chessboard and Hashem's moving the pieces. That's you. He said, that's, so there's no problem. So um, I was like, that's very beautiful. So it's a very inspiring. I said, you know, Rabbi Nachman says that you have a choice, chema or choma. Rabbi Nachman says that when you're supposed to get something good in your life, something's supposed to come, some wealth, either material or spiritual, is supposed to drop in on a person, they give them a chance to either hold on to it or squander it, let it go. So he can either create a choma, create a wall, by walling it in, holding it inside of himself, or chema means anger. If you're angry, you lose the ability to hold on to the spiritual blessing you're supposed to get, or physical blessing, or both. If you have choma, you create the wall and everything's okay. So I said, it's chema or choma. He said, yeah, but I'm telling you, he said, the first thing that you have to know, he said, and this is what helps me so much, he said, is shiviti Hashem the negdi tamid. I place God before me always. He said, if you know, you really, really know, like I was saying before, you're a chess piece, God's moving you, so like... You know, random guy, really good guy. You know, then everything's okay. You don't get upset. I'm like, this is a beautiful, you know, level to aspire to. Ashrecha, you know, I'm, I'm trying. Do better, do worse. You know, we work on it. Best Hashem. But it was a very, very beautiful uh, discussion that he, like, pulled up. I was like, I was like, wow. That's, I didn't even tell him. Was, that is exactly where we are today. Uh, see, that's uh, really amazing. So I felt like Hashem was telling me, you know, there are, in Israel, we're f- the world, the world is filled with people. A lot of it has to do with Ravarish, of course, who are always thinking of Amuna all the time, 24-7. People are, you know, wherever they may be, in the trenches, a person could be working, or Nachman says you could be a tzaddik who works. You don't have to feel like, uh, if I work, I'm, I'm, I blew it. If I'm not in Kola, I blew it. Quite the contrary. A person always has the ability to, to, to connect to Hashem. So that's the, that was the first thing. Now, Rav Nassim asks an interesting question. On this Shavisa Seng, the Negdi Summit, we can ask this question. It's, it's kind of an obvious question. How in the world are you supposed to put Hashem before you always? Who can do that? <sighs> That's the question. So um, I'll tell you what he says. He says you have to pay attention to the rest of the verse. The verse says, Shivisi Hashem, Shiviti Hashem the Negdi Tamid. Why? Kimi Mini Bal Emot. Because he is on my right side. I shall not stumble. Rav Nassim says, focus on the right side. Focus on the good. He said, this is done through Azamra Lelukai Bodhi. Rav Nachman's lesson of focusing on the good point. He said, if you're able to see the positive and the good, then you're going to be able to hold Hashem with you all the time and keep Hashem in your life all the time. So the less a person is able to focus on the positive, on the on the the incredible power of everything we do, of every moment, of every breath, of every again walking in our Israel, and every thought, every good thing, what that is, and how much that does to the whole world. The more we're able to see that, the more we're going to be able to understand just how much we have, and how much Hashem loves us, and gives us, and gave us, and is going to continue to give us. Every breath, every second, every instant, every nishima, we're supposed to be praising Hashem. That means how we breathe is supposed to be connecting to Hashem. We're supposed to be breathing with God. We're supposed to remember He's here. He's taking care of me every second. You know, He's, it's all Him. It's not for me. You know, um, sometimes we, we have a hard time. Things are difficult. Um, that's especially the time when Hashem is closest to us. The Medrash tells us that Hashem was with Yosef. So the Medrash says, wait a minute, you know, that's the verse. So the Medrash says, what, he wasn't with the other tribes? He wasn't with Yaakov, just with Yosef. He says, no, Yosef was in Mitzrayim. He was in Egypt. He was having a hard time. He was all alone and felt abandoned and had things hard for him. That's why Hashem was, had extra, mostly, with Yosef. When we're having it hard, that's the easiest time in a certain way to turn to Hashem. That's what the, the altar of Calum explains. He says, you know, when it's difficult... So on the one hand, you have, it's like Nisayon. Nisayon, Rav Nassim brings from the Zohar. Nisayon, the, the root of Nisayon is Nes. Nes means to uplift. It's like a banner. So he said, Nisayon is an opportunity to be uplifted. So we have to use it right. 
a person that's why we find sometimes a person's in a in a, in a difficult situation and you can just go to the unbelief you just can't understand how is this person so how is he holding in such a high place i mean like uh i'll give you an example on my mind right now my my father-in-law just went through a very complicated surgery a bypass and a, a valve replacement and a lot of hard stuff and um you know I know people that go through even easier surgeries, even though they're hard. And with him, it was dangerous. And, you know, Baruch Hashem got through it, thank Hashem. And, um, you know, the guy gets a little cranky. You know, things aren't the way you are. You, you, you don't know how to use your body anymore. You have to start again. It's very hard. And um, he's very, you know, he has equilibrium. Doesn't get upset. Does what he can. No, it's, so I'm, I'm just amazed. Like, a person could just go through such a hard thing and just, you know, Keep him, keep his cool, keep himself together as if he's okay, as if everything's okay. That's a very high level to be at where when it's so hard, you can like find yourself in the right place. Just not, not, it's like he's not suffering almost. It's like really amazing. He's not suffering. He's, he, he's holding by. And you know, you, you find this all over the place. Who are, who really work very hard on the middles, who work very hard on who they are. And um, they're able to keep it together no matter what, even the hardest things. But very often people in such situations, they get cranky, they get upset. You know, um, there's a story with, um, what they call him Zalman Kassan, I think. They call him Angry Zalman, Bey Zalman in Yiddish. They, they call this guy, he, he was very, very known for his um, talking down the younger generation, you know, the kids and people. He, he's very, he's an angry kind of guy. He just got angry. That was He felt like righteous indignation was his uh, watchword. And this guy was on his deathbed, and he had uh, the Chavah Kedisha saying, okay, now you say, Vida, you confess, and the things one does, and when the time comes. And these kids had heard, Bey Zalman, you know, it's the time for the guy. It was a very exciting thing. So they started climbing up on, on the window. There's a window. So they said, get down for the window. And that's how he died. That's that's <laughs> like, that's a sad way to die. Like, that's, you know, it's, it's funny. But, like, you know, it's like, it's very, you know... We have to like decide where where am I holding? Like, again, it's 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 a discernment. It's a it's a test. So you can take the test and pass and just be with Hashem and just just go like you know, unbelievably like the way you're supposed to connecting and, and being within Hashem. Or a person can be in a place where you know what are you doing? What is it? And it's like hey, take it easy. You know, I know a person. Uh, um, she went by. She wanted people to sing, sang, and heard her music, and that's how that's how it was time for her to go. Her husband. It's not uh, you know that, that, that's a that's a high level. That's that's something where you're you're connected. You're not uh, you're not alone. So that's the first thing. Um, I'd ask if there are questions, but this is something that's just I'm sure so deeply uh, clear, especially in this place. Are there any questions? Okay. So um, <laughs> what about a person who forgets emuna? I'll say it differently. What about every person who was always for sure going to forget Amuna? That's like a hard question, right? That's a hard question. So, you know, the, the, the Chosen Lublin, the Chosen Lublin was, you know, generally speaking, he died at a particular time. And the, the Sashalm of Bells was in his court. And it was time for him to go home. So he wanted to talk to the Rebbe. So he wanted to talk to the Rebbe, and he was told the Rebbe's very, very... Um, busy now because he hasn't even done because he's involved in a, in a difficult question. It's a question he just doesn't know how to answer and it's something that's really, really bothering him. So he said, well, what's the question? I think he was 17 at the time. So he said, you know, people, it says in the beginning of Shulchan Aruch, you're supposed to keep the Muna all the time. Tell me, always have a Muna. So how do you do that? Who always has a Muna? What, the very beginning of Shulchan Aruch you don't keep? You know, it's well known, I don't know if People know here, but like it's, it's well, pretty well known that of El Yopian, when he got older, so um, he used to get up very, very early. He got up before the dawn. He says, says you're supposed to get up really early, as early as possible. You're supposed to wake the dawn, right? So people asked him, what? Suddenly you're getting up early. You're making a big effort. You never miss no matter what. He said, what? I'm, you know, it's going to be time to go at, at a certain point. And what I'm going to tell them, they're going to say, okay, let's open. I said, what? The very beginning I'm going to like mess up? The very, very first words, like, Get up, read the dawn. Oh, he didn't do that either. He said, "Well, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to do, I don't want to be there. I want to at least be up." You know, he was on the level, on a very high level. But um, it's like, how can you possibly fulfill in the very beginning of Shulchan Aruch? Again, then it says a person it's kedai. He should wake himself up at least get like that's that's what's proper. But like here it says you're supposed to place God in front of you. That's the first one. And uh, he said, how, how could it be that the Jewish people, as a rule, it seems like it's an impossible thing to follow. You just can't do it. Always, no matter what, like, 
you know, there's one thing that stands in the way of us doing that all the time, which is uh, our humanness. We're humans, and humans forget things. Humans, things come up, and you know, you you know, someone cuts you off. You know, you can hit the brake. You're not going to say, "Oh, Hashem," like you, you know, you, you do your best. You, you try. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you can't. That's part of being a human. Maybe big tzaddikim, the, the righteous people, are really holding it at such a high place, but not everyone can be there. So, how do you do this? So, the young man the, who became the Sashlam of Bells, the first Bells of Rebbe, at, at a certain at, later on in life. He said, I think I have an answer. So because it says by shikha, it's if you drop sheaves, then poor people get them. In Eretz Yisrael, the rule is, when you take these sheaves, you're harvesting your field, and you drop, you forget. So what you, what you forgot, you can't pick up afterwards. You have to leave it for the poor people. But when you, he said, the halacha there is, the Mishnah says, if you saw they were dropping, you meant to pick them up later, that's not called shikha. That's not called this law of something forgotten that's the poor person's. That's yours. He says the same thing. The Jewish people, it's true we drop this sometimes. Sometimes we drop the ball about we can't keep Hashem all the time, all the time, all the time. But we want to always go back to it. So that's not called forgetting. That's called, eh, you know, you're, I'm a little lapse and I go back. So he said, the Chosen really loved the answer. He was very, very happy with it. And he went out to Davin, very, very thrilled. And that's really the answer we have to bear in mind, that the more I'm focused on connecting to Hashem, the more I'm focused on Emuna in whatever way I can, and it's many, many levels, the more I'm going to be able to go back right away, and the more it's not really so, it doesn't count for much if I lapsed here and lapsed there, because I'm just doing my best. You know, there's a certain... There's a level where a person doesn't get upset, no matter what, right? A person he's keeps together. There's another level with something that's upsetting, and you could say, okay, Hashem, fine, this is what you want. Help me out. Help me through this. Help me through this. Show me what, okay, I accept. Help me through this. Help me out. Just, you just, you remember, it's hard, but you remember, there are many, many levels and many, many um, different things that we need to work on to try to remember Hashem all the time. That's this idea of what, what a Muna is. A Muna is within every person. We all have a Muna. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, Zidacheva says an incredible thing. He says, when you meet someone who says, I don't have a Muna, he will be unable to help himself. He'll be unable to prevent himself from speaking all the time about a Muna. He's always going to say, I don't have a Muna. Don't have a Muna. Okay, okay, thank you. Let's talk about the Mets. No, he's going to come back. I don't have a Muna. I don't have a Muna. He says, why does he, he, says, why does he keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on harping on this one point? Fine, you don't. Get past it. He can't get past it. He said because he also needs to get a life force by the, using the Amunah with himself to connect to Hashem. Now, he can't do that in a straight way. So he does it what's called an Orchoser, a, a kind of backwards kind of way. By talking all the time about his not an Amuna, he sort of wakes up a drop of Amuna and that gives him life. Is it because he cannot? He can't just pipe down about it. I haven't spoken to Amunah in 20 years. You never meet someone like that. Oh, man, that's it. I never... He's always, always coming out again and again because we all have inside and that's just the way we are. That's the way Hashem made us. That's who we are. So that's the first, the very first sif in Shulchan Aruch. That's the very beginning. So Hashem is everywhere. We have to know, you have to know that He's here and we have to have a, a, a feeling, a deep-seated feeling that Yira, we have a fear and awe of Hashem. Yira, the, the deepest form, say Yira, is, if you take the letters of Yira, it makes up Re'ia, which means you see, you are seen and you see. So you see that Hashem's here with you. I see Hashem's here with me now. So then everything is good. Everything is the way it's supposed to be. Like my, like my friend said on the way over here, hey, you can, uh, you know, you you can turn faster, you can turn slower, the traffic messes you up, it doesn't mess you up, this happens, that happens, it's all from Hashem, it's all Hashem. It's all totally, totally Hashem. And this is another, uh, I, like I said, I, I'm very, I was very impressed. My father looked kind of should live and be well. And he was like, before his operation also, you know, it's dangerous. A lot of times people they retreat, they feel upset. And he was like, if Hashem, it's time, so it's time. I accept that, whatever Hashem wants. It's not that I have any deserve even a second. So whatever he wants, he just totally accepted, totally. And that's like the highest thing you can do because the commandment says that every xera, any decree, person sees a decree, something's very difficult for him. It's like, oh, he's like, oh, this is like so hard. He said, the reason why this decree is because there's a, a divine permutation, there's a name, there's something that's giving life to this decree. So if you say Hashem is doing this, he said, that sweetens the whole thing because then you picked up the divine name. You realize you brought God into your life and then things get sweetened and it completely become totally, totally different. Very often the whole thing disappears. If not, you can take it in a different way. Like that's that's just how it works. That's the way you are sweetening. That's the way things are. So um, 
That's the first sif here. Hashem should help us. Bizoche to the or of Amuna. See us in Shmaya. Remembering Hashem. Huh.